Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In previous videos, we talked about Clostridium tetani, which causes tetanus. And we talked about Clostridium botulinum, which causes botulism. But today, we'll turn our attention to Clostridium perfringens, which causes cellulitis, myositis, fasciitis, myonecrosis, gas gangrene, food poisoning with water, diarrhea and necrotizing enterocolitis with bloody diarrhea. With that said, now let's get started. For maximum understanding and retention, please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Clostridium perfringens is a gram-positive rod, spore-forming, yes, but rarely, anaerobic, non-motile bacterium. The classic story of the soldier who suffered some wound affliction fell onto the ground, his wound got contaminated with the soil. Meanwhile, Clostridia are ubiquitous in the soil. Some Clostridia delved into his wounds and he developed myonecrosis, gas gangrene, gas in soft tissue, etc. Hemolysis, bleeding, bacteremia, and septicemia are not uncommon. This dude is suffering big time. However, his wound smells nauseatingly sweet, cause perfringence is just like perfume. Do Clostridia make spores? Yes, they do. Although it is rare with Clostridium perfringens, it can still happen. It's a spore-forming bacteria, albeit rarely. What's a spore? It's a shell that's made of calcium dipiclonic acid. That was the structure. Function-wise, it's to protect the bacteria from unfavorable environmental conditions. Here is the classic definition of Clostridia. Gram-positive, anaerobic, endospore-forming organisms that are unable to reduce sulfate to sulfide. This definition has some problems. One of the problems is that Clostridium perfringens rarely make spores. Where can I find Clostridium perfringens? It's everywhere. Can they make endospores? Yes. Do they grow in anaerobic conditions? Yes. Can they make toxins? Big time. What the flip is a saprophyte? Sapro means dead and phyte means plant. Clostridia can live on dead cells. Hence the nauseatingly sweet odor that smells like decomposing apples. Pause and review. Clostridium perfringens, gram-positive rod, the rod is rectangular, rarely spore-forming, anaerobic, immotile, rapidly growing on culture media, beta, hemolytic. Ubiquitous all over the place, soil, water, and sewage, it can colonize your gut. There are many subtypes of Clostridium perfringens. There is Clostridium perfringens type A, type B, type C, type D, and type E. The greatest sum of human afflictions are caused by type A Clostridium perfringens more than any other type. As for type C, it's unique for the necrotizing enterocolitis. All these five types of Clostridium perfringens release alpha toxin, which is the most common toxin. Do we have other toxins released by Clostridium perfringens? Absolutely. There's the alpha toxin, beta toxin, epsilon toxin, and iota toxin, or iota as some people say. Let's talk about signs and symptoms or the clinical picture. You could have no symptoms whatsoever, just some colonization with no symptoms. Symptom-wise, it ranges from a very mild, self-limiting gastroenteritis to a severe, life-threatening, rapidly fatal gas gangrene with septicemia. Pick your toxin, I mean your poison. When a disease ranges from the mild to the severe, it is called Fum Fruste versus Fum Plain. These two terms were coined by the famous French physician Trousseau, the same physician who discovered Trousseau's sign of hypocalcemia as well as the Trousseau sign of malignancy. Did you know that, Cody? Tell me about the toxins. We have toxin alpha, beta, epsilon, iota, and do not forget the heat labile enterotoxin which will cause gastrointestinal symptoms. Let's start with the alpha toxin. It's an alpha lecithinase, a phospholipase for that matter. 
If you remember, your phospholipid bilayer cell membrane was made of lecithin as a lipid. This alpha toxin will break down your cell membranes in your red blood cells, causing hemolysis and bleeding in your white blood cells, in your platelets, in your endothelium. When I break down your endothelium, you will increase your vessel permeability and fluid will leak all over the place. When I break down the cell membrane in your tissue, I'll cause tissue destruction such as myonecrosis, liver toxicity, myocardial dysfunction, hypotension, bradycardia, etc. Tell me about the beta toxin. It leads to necrotizing enterocolitis. So pay attention. The necrotizing enterocolitis is caused by type C bacterium, Clostridium perfringens, but the beta toxin second letter in the greek alphabet but the third letter in the english language epsilon toxin is a protoxin i.e it starts as inactive who's going to activate it into the active form of the toxin the classic enzyme trypsin which is released from your pancreas as trypsinogen trypsin will make it active the active epsilon toxin will increase the vessel permeability in the wall of your gut leading to gastrointestinal symptoms. Yota toxin increases vessel permeability again and causes necrosis. We're done with alpha, beta, epsilon, and yota toxin, but don't forget we still have the enterotoxin. It's a heat labile toxin. Who makes it? Type A clostridium perfringens, which is responsible for most human diseases among all the clostridia perfringens. The enterotoxin is a potent toxin. However, trypsin, that's your trypsin by the way, will make it three times more potent. In your intestine, we have an alkaline medium, unlike the stomach, which has the acidic medium. But hey, metacosis, why do my intestines have an alkaline medium? Thanks to secretin release from the upper part of the small intestine, which goes to the pancreatic duct cells, telling them to secrete more water and bicarbonate. Bicarbonate will make the medium alkaline. This alkaline medium is amazing for boosting spore formation or sporulation. While the Clostridium perfringens is trying to make a spore, it will dish out all kinds of toxin to get rid of them because I do not want the toxin inside the spore. Who's gonna be left to pick up the tap, i.e. the toxin? You, as a human being. This enterotoxin is gonna bind your receptor on your brush border in your intestine, specifically the ileum and sometimes jejuna, but not duodenum. The toxin will find its way inside your cell, altering the membrane permeability of your gut, causing loss of fluid, hashtag watery diarrhea, and when you lose lots of water, you develop volume depletion. Now let's review Clostridium perfringens from Picmonic. Clostridium, here's the classroom. Perfringens, here is the perfume. Remember that our patients' myonecrosis and gas gangrene smell nauseatingly sweet, like decomposing apples. Perfringens, perfume. Never ever forget this. It's gonna help you big time in the hospital. Clostridium perfringens is a gram positive. Here's the angel. It's a bacillus. Here is the rod. Anaerobic, here's the ant in a robe, anaerobe. Spore forming, look at these spores, although rarely. Alpha toxin is a lecithinase, which breaks down your lipid bilayer cell membrane. We also have the heat labile enterotoxin. The diseases caused by Clostridium perfringens include myonecrosis, here is muscle necrosis, gas gangrene, here is some gas. Food poisoning from eating meat and watery diarrhea. Necrotizing enterocolitis will have bloody diarrhea. How can we manage myonecrosis with gas gangrene? Hyperbaric oxygen chamber. You know why? Because if the bacteria is anaerobic, the best way to kick it in the nuts is to give aerobic conditions oxygen. If you like this video, you will enjoy my antibiotics course. It will equip you with robust knowledge about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. Download it today at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Myonecrosis and gas gangrene are surgical emergencies. Learn more about surgery by downloading my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com.
I also have an emergency medicine and toxicology high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.